Hi all, we're gonna go over how to use the MIG spool gun for the Miller welder. Uh, the spool gun is used for welding aluminum, which is softer than steel. So if you try to run aluminum all the way through this long cable housing, it would bend and get tangled and, and be a mess. And so the spool gun keeps the spool of aluminum right here, and then only has to, has to feed it out just a foot to get to your material. So this is a really cool tool because it lets you MIG weld aluminum. So you don't need to be really good at TIG or anything to, to do that. So that's pretty great. Uh, we're just gonna go over how to set it up and how to use it. And then as a point of note, the manual for this tool just lives right underneath uh, the machine right down there. So first we're gonna pull this out here and open up the inside to remove the current spool, uh, the current MIG gun. And now we're going to pull this wire out. So first we're gonna release this guy so that we can retract the wire. So before taking this off, we need to snip the end of the wire because there's probably a bead at the end and that's gonna prevent it from pulling out. Okay, so we got this wire, now we can snip it off. And now we should be able to loosen this so that the wire doesn't spin free. We're just gonna use our other hand to hold onto the spool. Take this off and pull it out and just wind up the extra. Okay, and then when it's out, you just need to make sure to put it through a hole in the side so that it doesn't go flying away. Like that. Okay, and then we're just gonna put this over on the shelf for the next person. So now we are gonna load the spool gun in so we can remove this torch. First by undoing this connection and by loosening this thumb screw and pulling the torch out. And then so now we have the spool gun. And we're just gonna do the same thing in reverse. So we can take this rubber cap off and put that on the end of the other piece, the one we just took off. So we're just gonna put that right on here to protect it. And load this in through the front of the machine. And we not want this to be all the way seated in there. So both O-rings are fully in, so you want it to be fully seated. Then tighten down on this. Uh, the reason it's important that both O-rings are in is so that it gets a good seal and the gas can be put in. Unlike the other one, there's no hole here for the wire because the wire isn't coming in here. The wire is coming in with the spool gun at the other end. So we don't really need to worry about that, but we can just close it up and then make sure to plug this in because this is telling from the trigger when to Turn the gas and electricity on. Okay, so that's all set there. So we can close this up. So now we're gonna look at loading the spool gun. So the aluminum lives over on the shelf and it actually lives in a plastic bag because we want to keep as much of the oxygen away from the bag away from the aluminum as we can so that it doesn't oxidize if you're struggling with welding the aluminum one of the reasons may be that the aluminum has formed an, ox an oxide layer on the surface and is no longer uh, and, and that's that's inhibiting the weld i'm just opening this up and this is an ER4043 aluminum. So this is good for welding a whole bunch of different alloys of aluminum, uh, including 
2014, 5052, 6061, 6101, and 6063. So to load it in, we're going to open this. Off, and then we're going to take this corner and you can even just feel how much softer this is than the steel wire. It's very soft. I'm just going to use pliers to snip off the end. So to, to load the aluminum on here, we first want to make sure that this top nut is loose. This is pushing down on this metal sleeve, which is then squeezing this rubber. And that's what's going to hold the aluminum spool on at the right tension. So we need to make sure it's loose. Then we can slide this down on there. And then we'll start by taking the aluminum off here. And we just want it to have a slight tension. So that's, that's pretty good. Uh, and then you would increase that just by tightening down. So then we're going to just pull it back so that we can feed the aluminum through that little red tube. So now it's going in that little red tube and we're just gonna push, well, so first we need to, need to remove this off the tip as well as this contact tip. I'm just gonna use these MIG pliers to get a better grip on it. And now we're going to squeeze this red lever on the top and we should be able to feed our wire through. And it might actually be easier to do this while the spool is off. I'm just going to take this off again, snip off the bent a little bit. I'm just going to bend this wire a little bit straighter so that it can pass through a little more easily. Right, now it passed through nicely, and oop, it's coming out the tip. So this metal spring is coming out, so we're just going to push that back. And now this is out, so now we can load the spool back into here. Down, tighten this just a little bit so it's snug, and then put the cover right back on top. Then we're going to put the contact tip, slide it right onto our wire, tighten that, and then the gas lens, just like that. You need to use argon. So you need to switch the tanks from the mix to pure argon. So I'll show you how to do that right over here. So obviously we want to make sure that the tank is off. Uh, and we're going to just pull up on the collar and then pop that out and then move right over here to the argon. This is still reading pressure, but the tank is off. So you just pop that on and now the machine should be getting argon and we want the same flow rate of about you know 25 uh, cubic feet per hour CFH which is right around here. So you set that the same way as you do on the uh, on the normal MIG. So on the machine itself we're going to plug it in Tight. And then we can turn the gas on. Uh, and we will see, we'll check the flow rate. Going to turn the machine on on the back. And at the front, make sure that it is set to make aluminum. The material we are welding is a quarter inch. Uh, so we'll try the auto set feature and put you to 0 0.030, which is the wire gauge that we're using. 
And we're gonna test to make sure the gas is at the right setting. So I'm just gonna pull the trigger while watching this. And then all the same safety gear applies to using the spool gun. So you're gonna want to make sure you have everything covered, jacket, gloves, shield, you name it. So there are a few things to note when we are using the spool gun on aluminum. Uh, and one is that cleanliness is very, is very important. So we're first gonna use some isopropyl alcohol, but you could use acetone or maybe even simple green uh, to clean off oil. Then we're going to use the stainless steel brush labeled just for aluminum. And we wanna get it so that it's not glossy anymore. We wanna make it dull looking. Making it really. We're trying to break the oxide layer on here. I'm just gonna remove this. Um, that has the aluminum oxide that's formed on the surface. Okay. And now I'm just setting this up at an angle so that you can see it a little better. Uh, it's important to have a really good ground connection. So you want to make sure to, to get that. Try to clamp directly to the material when you can. And there's that. And that should be pretty visible to you. It's a little awkward for me to weld. So now these pieces are fit up. And we're going to do something that we don't normally need to do for other metals, which is preheating it. So we're going to preheat it to 120, maybe 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we're just going to use a propane torch, but you could also use oxyacetylene with a rosebud tip uh, or other, um, another way of preheating it. You only really need to do this for thicker pieces of aluminum. For thinner pieces, it's not really necessary. When we're using the spool gun, you want to have a stick out of about three quarters of an inch versus more like a quarter of an inch when you are using steel. The only control on the spool gun is the trigger, which just tells it when to start and stop. You still control the voltage and the wire speed on the machine itself. Uh, frequently, what will happen, one point of frustration with using the spool gun is the contact tip will, um, will get dirty. So you can either clean it out with these guys or you can just replace it and that can help um, make the welding easier and also as always make sure to use the snips to clean the ball off the tip um, so that it starts nicely so we can use the thermometer and it's still not quite hot enough it's a big chunk of aluminum so it'll absorb a lot of heat obviously we're going to make sure to use the fume hood all right, so we're at a pretty good temperature. Now we can try welding. And as I said, we want to be using a push motion. Um, so still tilt it a little back going forwards and keep about three quarters inch away from the material. All finished up just make sure to hang the spool gun back on the wall disconnect it from the MIG machine uh, you want to put the aluminum in the plastic bag back on the shelf maybe clean up the nozzle if need be and make sure that your tank is totally tight turned off and swap the gas back to the co2 argon mix clean off the workbench and you're good to go have fun